Welcome to the Steve Reeve Podcast with the best moments from the past week and a few things that didn't make it there. Powered by Coldwell Banker Ford McMurray. We love YMM. Monday. If you weren't paying attention about Friday and, you know, maybe as things were recurring over the weekend, there was some devastating stuff that happened. Yeah, that's right. Devastating things started hitting the internet just ahead of the weekend. The mighty, mighty boss tones have disbanded. I know. I know. I know. The band that brings us music that basically is the equivalent of what plays in a eight-year-old boy's <laughs> head when he's at Chuck E. Cheese's and is about to get an extra plate of nachos as he walks back from the uh, jukebox game of choice. <laughs> but it is, uh, you know, a sad time for the fans of the band, an interesting time for an announcement of this kind. You know, it just does seem kind of strange. But then again, when is a good time to announce, hey, we're not going to be doing what we were doing together for the last however many years, decades plus, anymore. Just not going to happen anymore. So, I mean, you know, sad day for the Mighty Mighty Boss Tones fans. Sad weekend. I'm sorry. There are some rarities going to show up on auction very, very soon. If you're a fan of Radiohead or the Red Hot Chili Peppers or the Eagles or several others actually they're donating some rarities some new items to a charity auction that's being held online through ebay called igniting the change and specifically it's to help out uh, youth and families that are living in the nickerson gardens housing project in la it's the watts community core nonprofit. so it is a very specific cause that might not resonate with you maybe it will Regardless, if you're a fan uh, of the, the, the artists, there might be some cool things to grab, which will still help out with a cool cause. Uh, Radiohead donating a vinyl and CD box set of In Rainbows from 2007. Chili Peppers giving a signed Fender Stratocaster guitar, as well as Flea himself uh, solo donating a customized Fender jazz bass with his own hand-drawn illustrations. As for the Eagles, uh, there's an acoustic guitar that was signed by them, as well used at the 1999 Millennium Concert at Staples uh, Center, uh, also up for Grabs. Tony Hawk, Steve Vai, Quincy Jones, George Clinton, Cypress Hill, and more all have items, and you can start bidding on them already. The story, the Spotify story, it gains another chapter. Of course, if you haven't heard, Neil Young at first and followed by Joni Mitchell, both of whom faced polio and experienced the vaccines that came out and saved countless lives. Uh, they have both uh, pulled their music from Spotify, giving an ultimatum saying, if you're going to continue to spread false information, misinformation, largely directed at the Joe Rogan Experience podcast, then you can't use our music anymore. And it's starting to have an effect because $2 billion over the weekend was lost in revenues from Spotify and other uh, artists are starting to get on board now. Spotify CEO Daniel Eck, he's released a statement, and the statement says that there's going to be a disclaimer advisory put on the start of every single podcast that they release. This advisory will direct listeners to their dedicated COVID-19 hub, a resource providing easy access to data-driven facts, up-to-date information as shared by scientists, physicians, academics, and public health authorities around the world, as well as links to trusted sources. At least they're trying. Meanwhile, Weezify has come out from Rivers Cuomo as well. This is an app you can download seeking to replace Spotify and all the music that it delivers except for specifically Weezer and Rivers Cuomo demos and things like that. You're listening to the Steve Reeve Podcast from 100.5 Cruise FM. Uh, unfortunately, uh, I've been noticing a rash of small business break-ins going on lately, you know, uh, and largely from the social media accounts of those businesses themselves, though some I have encountered, you know, talked to in person and actually gotten their, you know, reactions to it and how it feels to be broken into and targeted like that. Um, obviously, this is something that does happen, but there seems to be an uptick in the frequency of late. And I got to say, uh, in general terms, I cannot help but feel like I'm getting pretty sick of individuals stepping on small businesses as if they, you know, much like all of us, haven't been through enough disruption and interruption in the last couple of years. You know, I, I just wish for people to make every effort to support those businesses that are a backbone of any location, our fine town, for example, and, and not to put the lowest paid and hardest working staff of these businesses in awkward or fearful positions for whatever reason. So, you know, enough. And uh, a huge thank you has to go out to the people who are just trying to keep the wheels turning. Tuesday. A lot of people seem to be upset about something. Not quite sure why, but that something is all about Wordle. Yeah, Wordle, the new obsession. January 1st. Nobody has any idea what the heck this Wordle thing is. What is that? Is it like a Pokemon? I don't know. I don't know what it is. It's a game. Okay. Yeah, maybe I'll check it out. You play once a day for like five minutes and then that's it. Okay. 
I'll give it a try. Midway through January, I'm obsessed. I need my Wordle. Have you figured out Wordle? How many how many tries did you get it? I, I got it in two today. I'm very excited. Never gotten a one yet, but holy cow, that's like a hole in one. How could you even, you know, end of January? Wordle gets sold to the New York Times. Everybody's freaking out about it for a low, I quote, low seven-figure sum. Holy cow, that doesn't seem low to me at all, especially because this game was originally invented by a guy named Wardle who just made it for his partner who likes word games. Like, as simple as that. And it caught on. Internet loved it. Became an international sensation. And now somebody's got a payday. What is the problem with this? Especially this close to Valentine's Day, you could spin the romantic angle. I like it. I like it. I'm, I'm glad that he did. Uh, now, I understand people are upset because they're like, I'm going to have to pay for it? Well, not right away. Not right away. New York Times, yes, they are subscription-based, and so the, a lot of their content is behind a paywall, but they're saying that this will remain free. Your streaks will stay intact, and everything will just remain Wordle. It'll simply be hosted from the New York Times website, and they will own it and get any, I don't know, ad revenue from it. Whatever. They'll figure it out. You'll still be able to play. And if at some point they do make it, you know, a paywall scenario where you do have to put some money down to get your precious Wordle addiction in for the morning, you won't care about it anymore. The fad will have died by then. I'm sorry. It's just the truth. Some people are calling it dog fishing. Dog fishing. Uh, you know, you've heard of cat fishing, of course. This is where you pick your ugliest photos to paste into your online dating profile, right? Do I need to say online dating profile? Dating app? I mean, we get it. Almost all dating is online these days, but uh, this is smart. I mean, it, first of all, weeds out the most shallow of prospects, and it's sure to make just about any in-person meeting a pleasant surprise, right? Under promise, over deliver. Makes sense. It makes sense. There's some smartness here. Honestly, we're too worried about perfect appearances online. We're too worried about perfect appearances, period. But uh, this, I, I think there's something to it. A sincere question, though, about dog fishing and, and putting your ugliest photos forward. What do I do if all I have are the ugliest photos of me? You know? I'm just kidding. Don't be mean to yourself like that. Don't be mean to yourself like that. There are plenty of people out there in the world who will be happy to do it for you. So feel free. Cut yourself some slack. Hey, Alexa. Play the Steve Reeve podcast. Time to get into your music news. Kicking things off with the final appearance of Meatloaf. Yeah, he's actually going to be on uh, TV one more time on the series Ghost Hunters, where he actually was uh, first appeared on the show 2009. He's been avid on it and uh, is keen on paranormal investigation. It looks like uh, the very last time that he joined them for an investigation was September of 2021, and it looks like the episode itself should be appearing on Discovery Plus on February 12th. They put out a special trailer for it and everything. Now, we've got Nash, Graham Nash, joining Neil Young and uh, reuniting with him, not in terms of putting on a concert, but in terms of pulling their uh, music from Spotify and saying uh, that he completely agrees and supports his friend Neil. Of course, Crosby, Stills, Nash, and Young put out some great music back in the day and uh, have experienced a lot of infighting since then. And uh, on the subject of Spotify and people removing their music, India Ari has joined the race, but because of race specifically and uh, due to Joe Rogan's comments on race, he had a conversation recently, uh, a uh, two white men hosting a discussion on what it means to be black is where she drew the line, especially with some of the comments made. So for different reasons, she's in the same camp. Meanwhile, Nirvana is absolutely tearing apart the third iteration of the Nevermind cover lawsuit, saying, in fact, the lawyers representing the band, this case must end in response to the newly filed uh, whatever is going on from Spencer Eldon, the guy who was the tiny kid in the photo on the cover, who now, years later after trying to cash in on it, has some issues. Wednesday. Find out with absolute certainty whether we're going to get a longer winter or an early spring, right? Groundhog Day, welcome to it. Hello, we're here, and we're watching rodents prognosticate about the immediate future. Yes, that's right. And actually, got some of the accounts in already. And uh, that would be uh, in Nova Scotia, Shubenacadie Sam. Got some bad news for you. Sam says, long cold winter ahead. Briefly, briefly rising to the surface from the enclosure in, uh, you know, north of Halifax, uh, and saying to her handler, hey, check it out, shadows there, I'm afraid of it, I'm peacing out. That's exactly how it went down, yeah. Um, unfortunately, uh, that is, uh, you know, a portent of doom 
that is going to be 100%, 1,000% accurate and in no way could possibly go any different whatsoever. You know what? Instead of repeating the day over and over again until we get it right, a la, you know, uh, Mr. Murray, Bill's famous film, uh, we should repeat February 2nd, 2020. And then honestly, just go from there. Reboot, restart, do everything better, right? That's how it would work, right? If we got a review, if we got a, a second chance, a, another pass at it, another pass at the pandemic, we'd definitely do better, right? I don't know. Tom Brady officially on his way out of here. Gone. Retiring from the NFL, the most successful quarterback in the franchise's history. Well, not the franchise, the league's history, the league of several franchises, of which he has been a part of several himself. Um, and this is like the worst kept secret, isn't it? Isn't it? Do you ever have something that you're like, I want to make an announcement. I want to say something, whether it's just to family, friends, the world at large, and somebody else buries the lead for you. You know, somebody else just ruins it. They say something. And you're like, OK, well, now it's barely an announcement. That is Tom Brady's situation right now. Everybody's going like, he's going to retire. He's going to retire. Wait, wait. Representatives of Tom Brady want you to know that he is not officially retired yet. Two days later, representatives of Tom Brady want you to know he has officially retired. Um, he wrote, in fact, in a lengthy post saying, This is difficult for me to write, but here it goes. I'm not going to make that competitive commitment anymore. I've loved my NFL career, and it is now time to focus my energy and time on other things that require my attention. I'm not quite sure what those are. Maybe mowing the lawn? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, speculation is up to you, but he is gone, 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 and I guess officially kicking in after this weekend because uh, if he didn't make it to, or I mean, the past weekend rather, if he had not made it to this past weekend, that retirement would have cost an extra $15 million from what he's able to collect in retirement. So, makes sense, makes sense that the writing was on the wall and he waited for the exact right moment to let everybody know. We wish you well, Mr. Brady. Enjoy your retirement. Eat a couple of mac and cheeses and donate some of those millions to charity. Please and thank you. It's music news time, and uh, there's a lot to talk about with NFTs, unfortunately. Sadly, NFTs coming up once again this time around. Get get shocked. It's another scam. There's a website called HitPiece that has been selling songs and albums as NFTs on auction without the knowledge of the artists who created the music. Several, several artists uh, have been coming out. Uh, I mean, seen on the website, the Beatles, Taylor Swift, Bob Dylan, tons of acts. And you've got Bleachers uh, member Jack Antonoff saying, any Bleachers NFTs are fake. At the moment, I do not believe in NFTs, so anything you see associated with me isn't real. Cease and desist MFers came from Eve6. NFTs are fraud. And in a follow-up tweet, they said, NFTs are a multi-level marketing scam that are awful for artists. They have some choice words for Spotify these days as well. Um, and speaking of NFTs, Coachella auctioning off lifetime festival passes and unique experiences for this year's Coachella festival as NFTs. Yeah, sadly, getting into the scam verse as well. Uh, Neil Young as well in the news because of the Spotify situation, but more so because of joining forces with Amazon now and offering to his fans four months free subscription to Amazon Music amidst this whole tiff with Spotify going on as other artists and uh, and prominent figures are also coming to his side saying, yeah, we want to pull our stuff too for various reasons. Unfortunately, you know, Neil Young has now moved from frying pan to fire because it's not as if Amazon has a completely clean track record these days either. Thursday. A little bit awkward, a little bit awkward of a story from Tom Holland. Of course, he's promoting alongside Mark Wahlberg. The big Uncharted movie comes out like weirdly next Tuesday, February 8th. Talking to Access Hollywood, apparently there was a weird encounter uh, that they had while working on the film together and, you know, kind of hanging out after the fact. Tom Holland was over at Mark Wahlberg's place in L.A. and, well, I mean, let them tell the story. Essentially, Mark Wahlberg was kind enough to give me a massage gun after I left his house in uh, LA and he drove me back to my hotel and at the time I was confused as to what kind of massage gun this was having never seen one before and I thought it was the type of self-pleasure and I thought Mark Wahlberg was driving me back to my house for other reasons other than just being a gentleman. <laughs> Mark Wahlberg goes on to explain that like everything Mark Wahlberg does, he owns a business that sells massage guns and he was trying to give one of those from his business to Tom Holland probably so that he would talk about it a lot on social media and then sell even more stuff for Mark, right? And also to, 
help him out. They do they do hard stunts on those movies. But Tom Holland getting the complete wrong vibes just absolutely kills me. And honestly, I mean, you can be naive about these things. You can be naive about these things unless you're actually experienced in it. You might have a theory that a device that goes brrrr might have certain uses, you know what I mean? (laughs) Personal pleasure massager, holy cow. Uh, That'd be like giving your genitals a a few rounds in a professional boxing ring. I'm just saying, don't do it. Don't do it. Avoid. A lot of nominees now announced for the latest uh, 2022 Rock of uh, Hall of Fame nominees. Uh, the uh, Not inductees, but nominees. Beck, Pat Benatar, Kate Bush, Devo, Duran Duran, Eminem, Eurythmics, Judas Priest, Fela Kuti, MC5, New York Dolls, Dolly Parton, Rage Against the Machine, Lionel Richie, Carly Simon, and Trap Gold Quest, and Dionne Warwick. <sighs> There you go. That's the that's the list. <laughs> the Masked Singer saw a couple of the judges basically run out, walk off stage after it was revealed that someone underneath the mask was in fact Rudy Giuliani, former New York mayor. Ken Jeong and Robin Thicke both walked off stage in protest after seeing the reveal, and the rest of the world went, "Why Rudy Giuliani? Seriously? That's who you picked to be under the Why? Why?" Anyway, moving on. Crosby, Stills, Nash, and Young reunited once again in spirit because of this Spotify situation. Uh, The three members that were outstanding, I guess, if you could put it that way, say, we support Neil. Knowingly spreading disinformation during this global pandemic has deadly consequences. Just adding to a small swell now of artists from all different creeds now saying that they are going to be pulling their music from Spotify. In this case, each of the individual releases as well as the group Crosby, Stills, Nash & Young releases are all going to be gone from Spotify in the very near future. Thanks for listening to the Steve Reeve Podcast from 100.5 Cruise FM. There's a new bedtime story for you. Uh, All part of this Calm app. If you haven't heard about it, it's an app that brings together a lot of different uh, audio files to help you get to sleep, to help you relax. And they oftentimes hire very famous voices to do so. So you got kind of like that celebrity Connection lulling you off to dreamland. Well, Optimus Prime is the latest celebrity to do so. Optimus Prime of the Transformers, yes, and voiced by Peter Cullen, of course, as it should be, with the deep, low, dulcet tones. Just like, just lulling you to sleep. It doesn't matter what he's talking about, which is good, because uh, apparently what the subject matter of it is, uh, it's all perfectly acceptable for kids. It is designed for kids. However, on face value, It's Optimus Prime telling you about the history of the Transformers, a.k.a. the history of the Autobots and the Decepticon, a.k.a. a history of endless war, subjugation, and violence, as well as extreme prejudice. (laughs) Yes, yes, it's the exact same Transformers that we grew up on. It's not like it's going to be horrible, horrible stuff. It's stories about heroes and champions and things like that, but... Uh, at face value, it's a story about the history of war of <laughs> these these aliens. I think it's too funny, too hilarious. But again, it's Optimus Prime, so he's just going to be lulling you to sleep with his deep, deep tones talking about absolutely anything. He could be reading headlines from today's newspaper, and still, I'd be... <sighs> Friday. Beijing games taken over all over the TV. I mean on the specific networks that have purchased the rights to broadcast and talk about it, of course. But, um, yeah, on uh, CBC mainly is the main one here in, in Canada, and uh, it's just tons, tons of Canadian athletes. It's so cool. It's great to see a sea of red out there. Uh, but, you know, plenty of people to cheer on. Also kind of hilarious, because I got to watch the ultra-polite games staff on their, uh, you know, in their white bucket hats on the floor, trying to shoo the Canadians out of the arena as they all, and I mean all of the Canadian team seemed to immediately, as soon as they were done with their waving and their flag bearing, uh, they took to their phones, grabbed the phones out of pockets, started taking pictures, started responding to the endless stream of messages and support that's coming their way instantaneously. Just hilarious to see. Go Canada. This might get you in a little hot water if you follow in this dude's footsteps. So, just quick story. Uh, there was a couple out there in the world looking to book a flight to Japan, about a 12-hour flight from where they are. And uh, he, the cup, uh, husband of the couple books it, then upgrades his own seat to first class using points, but doesn't upgrade the other. Apparently, not enough points is my assumption. But then... <laughs> 
tells wife, saying, no big deal. We're just going to be sleeping anyway, so it doesn't matter. Uh huh, uh huh, nice argument. If it doesn't matter, why are you going into first class? But yeah, leaving the spouse behind, leaving the partner behind to just chill and coach. Not that big of a deal if you're both there, but it's definitely, definitely a little negligence going on there. A little me first and the gimme gimmies, you know what I mean? So the internet is slamming the guy after he was the one to go to the very famous subreddit, Am I the A Hole? And the internet very quickly let him know, yeah. Yeah, uh, that's that's you. He thinks she's going to be sleeping for 12 hours? No, she's going to be spending every single moment of that 12-hour flight staring a literal hole in that awful little privacy curtain between sections that doesn't really do anything except for make the people in coach feel bad. What would you do in this situation? You're listening to the Steve Reed Podcast yes. from 100.5 Cruise FM. Uh. Hopefully you're not snacking on your breakfast right now. Not feeling hungry because uh, there's a story that's coming out of the UK where couples got a new couch. New to them, of course. Second hand, and they wanted to, you know, replace one with something that did not have any smells to it. You know, looked the part, smelled the part, everything seemed to be okay. Got it home, happy about an acquisition that wasn't actually disgusting. Until they were looking for the remote control. So the story that they tell goes, and it's accompanied with some photographic evidence that could turn your stomach for sure. Uh, the the guys tried to look for the remote down the side of the couch and pulled back a fistful of candy wrappers and fingernails and various detritus, various debris. Oh, God. Uh, I, I just can't even handle looking at the photo. It's so gross. And it just plays off of the fact that I'm not a, not a big germaphobe. But I do want nails to be clipped in the bathroom. That is a thing. And it's mainly because anywhere else in the house, it's got the potential to go somewhere gross where it's going to either end up against your skin or end up in your food. And neither of those things are what I want. I don't even want that of my own nails, let alone somebody else's clippings. It doesn't matter if they're close either. I do remember a time way back when when I had to get livid with a roommate because they were in the living room, whipped the socks off, throw those on the couch beside them, and then pull out the nail clippers and start to go to town on the toenails on the couch. And then I'm like, this is gross. You're going to make a mess. It's going to be flinging everywhere. And they go, no, no, no. I got the ashtray out. I just just clip them and put them in the ashtray. I'm like, great. Yeah, you've got a receptacle. Except for the fact that I can literally see them flinging six feet across the room just about every time you go click. Not a fan. Not a fan. Um, I would burn the couch at this point. Maybe move it out of the house first. That would be intelligent, but still. It's far gone, far gone. The grossest part to me about reading this story was that they described the sound of vacuuming up the contents of the couch as if they were vacuuming up a pile of dry rice. Red Hot Chili Peppers out with some brand new music. Yes, and an announcement about their brand new album that's soon to arrive. Album titled Unlimited Love, which they say is a collection of songs that each is a facet of us, reflecting our view of the universe. This is our life's mission. We work, focus, and prepare so that when the biggest wave comes, we are ready to ride it. The ocean has gifted us a mighty wave, and this record is the ride that is the sum of our lives. Thank you for listening. We hope you enjoy it. Well, here's just a taste of the first single off of it called Black Summer. Just a sample for you. It's going to be coming out at some point in the future. Not exactly listing a date for us, but stay tuned. Meanwhile, Tegan and Sarah are announcing a new album that is actually an old album. They are reimagining a new version of their 2004 release called So Jealous, and uh, including updated versions of songs like Where Does the Good Go? And uh, they said that it was about six months into the pandemic starting that they decided they got to reimagine this thing. They've been working on it since. The release is actually going to arrive very soon, February 11th. And Jon Stewart is joining the conversation about Spotify and specifically the Joe Rogan experience after the wake of a a slew of artists for many reasons, actually, not just the singular reason about misinformation about COVID-19 vaccines that uh, may or may not be being spread by the the experience. Now, Jon Stewart saying, don't leave, don't just cancel the guy and don't make him have to, you know, be gone from Spotify. Don't don't oust him. Engage with him. Speak with him. 
communicate with him. Let him know your concerns. And I got to say, I do agree on a certain level. I think it is not cool to actually censor Joe Rogan off of Spotify. However, harmful misinformation does need to be addressed. So and and people, the consumers leaving the the service, that's just voting with dollars. That's not actual censorship because you can still listen to the guy. Might need to be sitting down for this one. Hormel, the fine people who have brought many, many a chili related thing to your table over the years have created. They've not just filled a keg with with chili cheese. No, no, no. They have designed a pressurized contained keg apparatus containing chili cheese that even has its own internal heating element so that the chili cheese inside is always the perfect temperature for maximum dispensation. And it holds just about 300 servings of chili cheese within it. Here's the sad part. Here is the devastation I'm going to level upon you and the entirety of human civilization. Hormel has only made one. One of these hot chili cheese kegs. That's right. And it's going away as part of a promotion. It's a contest. I don't even know if Canadians are eligible for it. We rarely are. So I don't know. Don't hold your your hopes up for getting it the, the regular way. You might be able to find it for millions on eBay after the fact. I don't know. But there is only one. There can only be one. It's like the Highlander of chili cheese kegs. And it gets upset any time it finds anywhere else with a pump and chili cheese in the same location. Uh, I think this is a great thing. However, one, one comment, Hormel. Mass produce these, you cowards. Transmission over. One more, Steve? New podcast episodes happen every Friday or just tune into the Steve Reeve Show. Weekday mornings starting at 5.30 a.m. On 100.5 Cruise FM.